is a story. Hi everyone, Happy New Year. Here we are, January 2017. Lots of changes, lots of evolutions. So this is the deal. In 2016, I got the vision, the picture, the reality, uh, the sense that the demographics were breaking off, splitting off. However, it's become very clear in the last six weeks that I was, I'm picking up on something that's happening in the future. It's not quite happened yet, but what has happened is that the demographics, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, all the signs, these demographics that are on these evol evolutionary narratives, they're unfolding spiraled evolutionary stories in particular themes. I do believe, I feel, I sense that they've split. And so what I'm gonna be doing, and this is gonna be more work, so I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing this. But what I've started to do for 2017, January, is for each demographic, I am doing two readings. So there's a split happening. There are cert There's a certain populace of people. There's a certain mm, evolutionary story that's unfolding for, let's say, half or at least a quantity, maybe even a third, a quantity of Aries. And then there's another storyline unfolding for another populace, another segment of the Aries demographic. It's the same for Taurus, etc. So let's get started on the year. I'll explain it as we go through um, the reading this month. Everyone, so there's a lot to talk about as we complete 2016 and we enter into 2017. So, of course, this is our January 2017 alchemy scope, right? This series of alchemy scopes for this new beginning of a new cycle. And indeed it is. So let's start with talking about the numerology. 2016 was a nine year. It was a hard year for many, many people out there. It was a very tough year. On the collective scale, it was a very tough year. In fact, this nine year of 2016 was about endings, completion. It was about old patterns coming up to the surface for healing, for seeing. So as we complete this nine year, we enter into 2017 which is a one year. 2017, two, zero, one, and seven together add up to 10. This 10 year adds up one and zero to one, all right? One is initiation. It's individuation. It's the individual. It's initiative and innovation. It is a new beginning. One is a new cycle. It is literally the new seed. So as most of you know who have tuned into my alchemy scopes for ever, you know, since I've begun or even more recently, you realize that these alchemy scopes are always attuned to nat natural cycles. So they're always aligned with the new moon portal point. And the new moon is a new seeding time. Indeed, everybody, 2017 for all of us on the collective scale is representing energetically a new seeding time. It's a new moon on a massive scale. So we're entering into a new phase of a nine-year cycle. So this 2017 year is about new beginnings. So this is fantastic. And I have to tell you, everything that I'm going to bring up now is aligning with this message of 2017. Ironically, on this new moon point where we are officially kind of beginning, this is post winter solstice in the Northern hemisphere and entering into this new cycle for the year. I'm recording this of course, before this Capricorn 
new moon right before January 2017 begins. This new moon point, this Capricorn new moon, is the third of the last three months of a seven degree new moon point. Scorpio had a seven degree new moon, Sagittarius had a seven degree new moon, and Capricorn has a seven degree new moon. In fact, to be exact, the new moon that is occurring on the 28th slash 29th of December is at 7 degrees 59 minutes Capricorn. Now everybody, the amazing thing that's aligning with this new moon, this new beginning point that is representing for us the uh, the the beginning of the chapter, the pre-chapter of the calendar year shifting to 2017 is that Uranus goes direct on the same day as our new moon. Now, if that weren't enough, we have the most amazing Sabian symbol, everybody. Listen to this. The Sabian symbol that is imbued at seven degrees Capricorn is this. In a sunlit home, domesticated birds sing joyously. The keynote that Dane Rudyard writes is the wholesome happiness which subservience to the ideals and patterns of a well-established culture brings to those who accept them unreservedly. The wholesome happiness which subservience to the ideals and patterns of a well-established culture brings to those who accept them unreservedly. So let me read on. In various ways, this section of the cyclic process brings to us images glorifying the power and benefits which a steady and well-integrated society brings to its members. Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn was the ruler of the Golden Age before he became a symbol of binding limitations. The person who accepts willingly, or even better, takes for granted the value of these limitations can lead a serene and happy existence, whatever the social status. This stage suggests to us how we can enjoy our life condition by allowing the spiritual values it embodies to fill our consciousness. In every condition provided by a healthy culture, which hardly refers to our present chaotic world, human beings can find enjoyment in the roles they are born to play. Everybody with 2017 equating to the energy of a one year, a new cycle, a new birth, individuation. This is about you becoming you. This is about you as a distinct soul print, a distinct individual stepping into your uniqueness, your distinctness, and doing you. This could not be more aligned with a bigger picture. I mean, it's, it's quite something. So this particular symbology is imbued not only for this particular new moon, but at the point at which Uranus is going direct. And Uranus is the individual. It is our distinct genius self. It's our uniqueness, our distinctness. So there's no accident. There's complete alignment with the fact that Uranus is going direct and that it's happening on this new moon. And this new moon is the third of three sevens. And this particular symbol is the, is the picture. This is birds singing joyously in a sunlit home. This is about emanation. Sun emanates. This home is safety, security. It's the self. It's the body. Everybody, this is this is quite something, you know. Now, let's talk about this new cycle. So, you heard me say in the introduction to this video that I had been getting a call for a long time now, actually. This is since last spring. 
so spring of 2016, I got a really clear picture that, um, that these demographics of the signs are going to start to split, that there's going to be uh, a threading of the story. It's going to fray out because as people step into their individuation, as people understand that they are distinct, as they understand they are a powerful, distinct uh, facet of consciousness, of source, they are going to break. They're going to go into more of their aligned soul print path. And the general demographics for the unfolding is going to shift and change. The thing is, I tend to pick up on things well before they manifest. So when I picked this up in spring 2016, it wasn't necessarily happening yet. What I got clear on in the last six to eight weeks is that there is a split, but it's not threaded out into many different facets of story. So for example, instead of the demographic of Aries continuing on a general evolutionary path of unfolding narrative, it is split, but it's now split in two. So there's a distinct evolution upward and there's another evolution going in another direction. As we move from a stable state into a chaotic state, as people continue to unveil and awaken and really align with their distinct soul print, they will not follow a general narrative. So yes, there is a split now. Is that split going to further break into different threads of story? Yes. At some level in the next couple of years, I don't necessarily foresee these particular readings following any particular um, thick storied narrative. They might. Because again, I see things well in advance, years in advance of sometimes this stuff happening. So it could be that it's five years down the road. But maybe it's sooner. It's going to depend on how quickly people wake up and how people really, I think what's happened for me in the last six to eight weeks is I've realized the level at which people are still strongly asleep. And so because that's the case, the, the, the uh, understanding that I've gotten, the clarity that I asked for and that I received was that indeed there is a split but right now, it's only a bifurcation. It's only a split into two. So that's what we're going to proceed with. So let's move forward into the individual signs. And we're going to take a look and see one or two, A or B, left or right. Because I am going to show you two different spreads and two different I Ching narratives, okay? And one of those is going to align more for your story. All right, so let's get started. So I'd like you to meditate on two forms, square and circle, square and circle. Now, if you'd like to align the form square with the number one or with the directional identifier right, you can do that. And I want you to also meditate on the form circle or number two. It can also be B of A and B or left of right and left. But I think the easiest way, because you're my very first recording, you know, I'm doing this, this split spread situation now for the first time. And I really do. It is my very authentic intention to make this easy and smooth as opposed to more complicated. It is absolutely against my deep desires to make any of this complicated. But unfortunately, there, it, there's more information coming through. So I'm going to bring it, at least for now, I'm going to bring it forward. And I will attempt to be as clear and concise as possible. I think that square and circle, tapping into the forms, are going to be the easiest for people. Because it's not about one being better than two. In fact, it's not that at all. 
A being the first letter in the alphabet, B being the second. There's always some hierarchical uh, association that humans do with that stuff. And because I didn't want that, I think that square and circle are going to be best. So tap in. And once you know, once you know what it is, that is your form. So for all of these alchemy scopes coming forward, you are going to be square. You're not going to go back and forth between square and circle. Now, could it be that you, that you kind of switch paths or that you shift trajectory? I, anything's possible. Absolutely anything is possible. But you're not going to flip-flop back and forth every month. If you pick square or if you pick circle... I am doing the readings according to those pathways. Okay? So, let's begin. We're starting with square. So, if you selected square as the resonant form for you, that means that that is your unfolding trajectory at this time. Leo squares. Okay, so let's take a look and see what is your unfolding story this month. For the I Ching, you received two hexagrams. The first was number seven, organized discipline, and it came with changing lines, and it became number 59, dispersing. What this has to do with, this underlying narrative for you, has to do with um, something is available, but you need to work to get at it. And number 59, dispersing, is about dissolving of obstructions and letting flow happen. Once ice melts, for example, the river surges. So dispersing is about dissolving obstacles. And interestingly, number seven, organized discipline, can have to do, can bring up the picture of an invaluable resource being available but hidden and requiring effort to access, like water underneath the earth so or within the earth so here there's water available a resource available but there's dispersing that's necessary okay so something's there it's hidden it requires effort and there is indeed some level of dissolving or dispersing that must be activated or is going to be activated now, interestingly, for your Dakini, the optimal embodiment, your evolution this month, who are you to become and embody to flow with the cycle? Number 52, Copper Woman. Copper Woman, this is from Penny Slinger's 64 Dakini Oracle. Copper Woman is about survival. She really is the chop wood, carry water archetype. This is about doing what's necessary to heal, doing what's necessary to survive, doing what's necessary in the now for your logistical reality that is called, okay? So you are to just do whatever is necessary to survive. Really, she is the survival Dakini. The interesting thing, the, the piece that I'll share with you about Copper Woman is that this really is speaking to if you put in your effort, if you do your part, if you participate in a very heartfelt and hardworking way, you will be, quote unquote, visited by entities, energies, information. Information will come to you from the immaterial realm, from the source field that will then aid you. But Copper Woman is almost talking about there's a... Um, starkness to it it's like now you just have to get to work now you just need to do whatever's needed to survive now leo let's go ahead to your reading for the leo squares now you can see here it's a tough reading now because you only received a few like the stark base amount of the brawl to lay cards which are the yellow bordered cards here i added not just the uh tarot my druid craft tarot to the center of the reading but also to the base of the reading because i wanted to get a little more information here on it for you 
The center of the reading is no, never. And it has to do with the Queen of Cups reversed. So for many of you, this is about a woman in your life. For the men out there watching or for those in a relationship with a woman, it could absolutely be that there is a relationship that is ending, that's coming to an end. It could be a mother archetype or some a maternal figure for you. It doesn't have to be a love relationship. It could absolutely be a friend or a maternal figure or somebody in your life where there is indeed an ending, okay? And we can see the ending card is there. It's in the spiritual sector. So there is an ending of harmony that the Leo squares are going to be experiencing during this cycle. January 2017 and indeed at the base breaking so there's a separation a break up that has that's causing sadness five of cups is there so there is some emotional sadness about this separation about this breakup at the top of the reading releasing so there's ending breaking releasing no so there's a lot of ending stark endings a very saddening end to a harmonic relationship Okay, and I'm sorry to, to, to share this with you, but this is exactly what came forward, and I'm here to bring what comes forward with, with clarity, you know. But your thoughts are going to be about what this release will mean for you. So again, releasing at the mental sector, you're going to be thinking about, okay, this is now dissolving, this is now gone. Now again, I want to point us back to the I Ching, organized discipline dispersing so there was something that was always a little bit hard to access maybe with this woman again number seven does talk about a resource like water underneath the earth's surface hard to get to that could easily be talking about the feminine it could easily be talking about a woman maybe there was a woman that was hard to get to hard to access hard to be with there was some harmony there but it was always maybe a little difficult. And with dispersing, indeed, there's something being released. There's an obstacle being exploded, melted, dissolved. There's a dissolution happening with this organized discipline scenario. Now, for the circles, Leo circles, let's take a look at what's happening for you. For the I Ching, you received one hexagram, number 35, easy progress. Easy progress is about a lack of obstacle. It's about everything is smoothly proceeding just as it needs to, one foot in front of the other, going and proceeding in a natural evolutionary way. Things are easy progress. It's like the sun rising. There's more and more clarity. With every step, there's more and more clarity. So for Leo circles, easy progress is the narrative. Interestingly, the Dakini that's coming up for you as the guidance is number 37, Protectress. Protectress is about taking care of yourself. So, for example, if you need psychic protection, if you need energetic protection, physical protection, emotional protection, it is about honoring your need and taking care of yourself. So it's about doing what you need to do. Again, this is, it's kind of like with Copper Woman up above, but Copper Woman for the square cycle is more about surviving, doing what you need to do in order to move forward. Here, it's about honoring your process that's playing out and creating the proper boundaries and protective mechanisms at play that is simply required now. It's just, it's just a required part of your process, okay? Now, let's take a look at your reading. Your reading here, again, you can see that there is some, there's some loss. There's both, both paths for square and circle, there is a release, there's a loss. However, there's a different perspective playing out. There's a different path playing out. Here in the center of the reading, I'm using my Siri deck. The center card is process. Then eliminate. Then the Ten of Swords reversed. Now, here, the circles are processing the elimination. They're processing it. 
and they're seeing it as getting over the Ten of Swords reversed is perhaps getting over something that has just occurred, a devastation that's just occurred, a loss, a breakup, an ending that's just occurred, right? Or it can also have to do with avoiding an extreme level of devastation. Either way, this is about the same for Leos, I think, because um, if we look at the center reading, there's this processing of elimination and really looking past this Ten of Swords experience or not seeing it as fully Ten of Swords devastation reality and really moving beyond that perception. And we see these other aspects of the self emerging. Down at the base, we see support. There's many areas of life that are feeling supported. So what does this mean? It means that despite any elimination that's occurred for you, there is an access to the reality that you are supported in myriad ways by myriad people. Up at the top of the reading, home and discernment. So you're going to be thinking, having thoughts around um, your home, your home life, where you live, your security, and you're going to be discerning um, how maybe the elimination that's occurred is actually supporting you in many ways when it comes to the ideal home environment or the ideal home life. So you're discerning, you're thinking, you're processing this month and you're thinking about how the elimination really has supported you and how it will unfold what will need to occur with home, with where you live, okay? And the details of home. In the spiritual sector, over on the right, you can see structure and foundation, trust, return, and habit pattern. So this is talking about structure. This could be literally talking about the structure of your life, like literally the structure of your reality. But the structure that's at a topic for you this month, you're trusting that um, things will return to a habit that is hopefully healthy, a pattern that is hopefully healthy. So the pat you're you're trusting that things will return to normal, okay? Or to a better normal is really what I want to say. In the emotional sector, courage allowing. So for the Leo circles, you're going to feel courage and a willingness to allow the process at hand. This is about surrendering to the what isness. It's about loving what is as Byron Katie so eloquently states and teaches, it is about loving the what isness. Okay, so Leo's, uh, let's move on to these final components of your reading this month. Everyone, an exciting announcement. Throughout 2016, I've been called to bring forward a Learn Your Soul Print course, and indeed it's happening. January 2017, we'll uh, have three live stream courses discussing key aspects of your astrology, your archetype encodings, and the Sabian symbology that lives within your soul print, your soul's blueprint, that really are foundational understandings to knowing what our natural alignment is. It is highly delicious. And so for those intrigued, this is a great price, and I encourage you to learn more about it. The web address is thealchemyofholism.com slash soul print course with hyphens uh, between the words. And you can find the link below this video. So for those ready to start 2017 with clarity, with alignment, I highly, highly recommend learning about this course, an excellent price point. The goal for me to provide a course versus working one-on-one -on -one with clients, which is what I do, is so that I can help more people align to their stories. And this story is the natural alignment, the, the natural bliss state. So I look forward to seeing some of you very, very soon. Everyone, before I sign off um, and wish you a very good month ahead, an evolutionary, a rich, and expansive month ahead, I want to remind you that in order to get your 
personalized alchemy scope with a spread, with an astrological um, assessment of your solar return, with a discussion of your Sabian symbology, of everything that's activated, including your transits, um, I urge you to make contact. The link is below. And this is a video that you're going to have permanent access to, so you can refer to it throughout the year. But there is about a two-week lead time, so I encourage you, if you'd like to tap into what the whole of 2017 has in store for you, please go ahead and click the link below to place your order right away. Talk to you soon. Bye. You are an embodied reflection of Source. You are thus infinitely empowered, abundant, and a co-creator with your context always. You are an alchemist. Divination works because the web of life is intelligently organized with coordinated and storied agency.